Ahoy and welcome to the channel. I'm Commander Tyrael, but my friends call me Ty. Today we're working on the Italian Albatross. I'm running a 10, a destroy 10 units wager, and I'm trying to finish spading, and, sorry, finish grinding the Italian tree. The Albatross is a very effective vehicle. I have a history and guide video in the works, and I'm not sure which order they will come out in, so check to see if it's out, and if it is, make sure to watch it. Today we're just going to play the ship and I'm going to show you exactly how to play it. Taking a few HEVT shells, re just a reminder that this ship has magazines, drum magazines, so each of those is 14 rounds. Playing like a typical frigate, you spawn in the destroyer spawn, which can be deadly on some maps, so keep in mind when and where to spawn. But this map is usually fairly good for this boat. Getting underway, making sure everything's set, making sure I've got enough sustenance in the form of a beverage. And we'll get some targeting underway. Looks like a Japanese frigate out here in the distance. So we're going to put some highly accurate fire on them. And it's just a matter of spraying it around the lead indicator and you should get some hits. Very accurate. 14 shells to the reload, and then it's about seven seconds with my expert crew. Got some hits there on the Japanese ship. We'll give another salvo. I really like this gun. This gun is amazing, the SMP3 76 millimeter. Didn't have the best history in real life, but as is the case in War Thunder sometimes, they perform exceedingly well in the game meta. The fact that this gun does not have an overheat function or feature if you want to call it that, means that you are accurate all the time and you don't need to worry about cooldowns. I would much prefer to manage a reload than manage weapon heat. And the, the shells are very potent, high explosive shells. And so it has my vote for the best 76 millimeter gun in its class. Obviously the SKR has more 76mm guns, but if you were to put them one to one, I would say that this is a better, better weapon of choice. So my goal is to slowly but surely make my way to the alpha point. Part of the role of this ship is you will fight destroyers and you will fight coastal. And sometimes you will fight one and sometimes you will fight both. In the case, it looks like we have both coastal and destroyer players, which is a really nice placement. 4.7, fighting lots of destroyers can be difficult. So we have destroyers to the left and coastals to the right. And baby, I'm stuck in the middle with you. Let's get some fire underway. The rangefinder is amazingly good. I don't really need it, but it is great for working out what maneuvers the ship is making at distance. A couple of AI boats, fairly easy to swat. The 11 millimeters of penetration and, and the drop on the shell lets you get through the deck armor of those river boats at, at range. A little bit thirsty today, so don't mind me while I have another drink. Looks like we have a PT-565. Put some fire out onto him. Is it a 565? It looks, no, it's a devil boat. It's got rockets on the front. Keeping an eye out for coastal vessels getting too close to my destroyer friend here. And he's going to take the brunt of the destroyer fire. Now, you do have to kind of play like a cruiser in that you have to really decide where you're going to go and where you want to make an impact on the battle. Playing like a frigate, we want to get into a coastal zone where we can make the most of our gunfire against smaller boats and assist the destroyer fight. If these zones are being pushed heavily by destroyers, which are much faster than us, we'll soon know as we crest this point Trying to get some fire in on this German minesweeper, but he's a little bit close to that hill. Oh, 
Another a Iron River boat. I'm not too concerned with those guys. And there we have a Leopard. Now, these guns here absolutely shred this particular class of ship. Making sure to spray along the deck. Taking out all these squishy bits. Those torpedoes just detonated and it's done catastrophic damage to the ship. Nice sedate kill. No time to react. That's how you want to fight destroyers. If you can't quite get them in the first few salvos, then make sure to keep the harassment up. Being able to multitask between the reloads is is also a beneficial to your gameplay style, I think. I find the other 76mm cannons, you get too focused on gunning down your target and you don't pay attention to the reload or the overheat, sorry. Clemson here, already suffering some severe damage, but we're going to give him some anyway. Trying to finish off that front crew compartment. You can quite, you can overpressure into the crew compartments. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but keep that in mind. Though this does not work against anti-frag armor at all. More coastal boats. There's a PT-565, let's get him. Solid hit through the bridge. Now we can just take our time, two shots. One and two. Nice hits. If you're a, playing in a coastal boat and you see a frigate or a corvette that has this sort of higher power, you need to make sure they don't see you. And if you must attack them, do it from absolute secrecy. Because you only have a few seconds to react before they can bring their guns to bear and finish you off. The high traverse rate. You want to take out the guns before they get to bear on you. Got a sub chaser squad. Another easy finish. Try and get his friend in the background as well. We are taking a fair amount of damage from this AI riverboat, so just getting in the way but they are extremely accurate with their 40 millimeter guns making sure to keep up the awareness while we wait for our reloads we don't want to get surprised as we get close to the coastal zone we are out in the open now so we're at maximum danger This guy is not focused on us, so we'll put a little bit of damage. These ships take a lot of damage to their torpedo bays. They have a lot of torpedoes, and when they're repaired, you lose a lot of crew every time you take them out. Project 123 will take him out. Only takes a few salvos on such a light boat. And so the the match isn't looking too good, and we have no real way to contest this capture zone dilemma. We just have to slowly but surely make our way towards the zone and hope that one of our teammates can get there first. And if not, get there as soon as we can, and then really try and put pressure on the other team to try and get their ticket bleed really swinging. Clearing off the decks of this Kirch. These guns are ex excellent against destroyers that have casemate turrets or are unprotected. They can still get through most turrets, but it's much easier against those sh uh, ships that don't have turrets because of the shrapnel that flies and obliterates everyone on the guns. Oh, here we go, an Albatross. The German variant, much smaller, but still fairly well armed with the Otto Malara. If he had his AP rounds fitted, he would probably do an obscene amount of damage. Wait a minute. I actually don't think they get AP rounds. My mistake. I think they're cursed with HE as well, but don't quote me. I haven't played the Albatross a lot for the German tree. I'm waiting till it gets its Exocet missiles and then I'll play it. <laughs> Having those things on it is just a giant tease. Oh, we have a Jaguar. That thing will shrek us with its 40mm Beaufors. Absolutely brutal amount of damage. 
and I haven't played much of that boat yet. I have unlocked it, but I intend to, to play it soon. We have an airstrike inbound. We'll put out some shells to try and get a sense of where he's at. The radar indicator is not always totally accurate, it's just a guide. So we're going to turn away a little bit, so we're moving away from him. Try and minimize the closure distance. It will push us slightly out of the capture zone, but if we don't survive, it won't matter if we get to the capture zone or not. Inbound, that's now's the most potent time to fire when they're straightening out for their attack run. Oh, we detonated his boats and the Jaguars come around. We've lost ability to reload, so always switch to your secondaries. We were caught in a reload cycle. That was just poor timing. Fortunately, he didn't do much more damage. And we're making it to the capture zone with just enough time. And this is the theme of this, this vessel. Unfortunately, you are at the mercy of the capture zone tickets. And so it, it can be wise to play with friends if you have any that play naval. Generally, by the time you get this boat, though, you'll be extremely experienced in how to play coastal because it is one hell of a grind and even myself have not yet unlocked this vessel i was given a test drive and i furiously used it to unlock the rest of the italian tree because i must say it is one of the harder coastal grinds simply through a lack of options and their weaponry isn't really up to par So our gunners managed to take down that BF-110 without any of our assistance. So we'll do a J-turn here into the capture zone. I like to call that the Governor's Palace or the Governor's Villa. So we'll load up the Governor and then we'll head off to another capture zone. We have stabilized now. As long as that uh, Charlie Point stays on our team, we should win this battle. I'll just pick on this AI while I wait for my drum magazines to be reloaded into the ship. And see how close that was? You know, there's not there's probably like a thousand tickets left. And so that may frustrate some players. But if you do your most to affect the outcome of the coastal battle at the start, then hopefully it won't come down to this sort of thing. My first few games in this ship were a little bit annoying because I had been playing uh, P fast PT boats and fast attack boats all the week prior. So I wasn't used to the slower nature play of this ship. But this boat also gives you a lot more time to talk and how to get things done. Despite the reload, you can also use continuous fire by alternating between the fore and aft turrets like I'm doing here, using my ranging fire to start the cycle. And by the time one ends, the other one is reloaded. So it is quite an effective rate of fire. But you do get diminishing returns when using this gun on the same target. Once all the deck modules are dead, it, it really does slow down. So you just wait for them to repair and then throw a few more down their range. Every time the reload cycle completes, which is very slow, you get one drum per gun. So I've had a few battles where I've run exceedingly low on ammunition and I've had to pretty much stay on a capture zone. I don't feel like I'm doing much more to this guy, so we're going to head out towards Bravo. I don't want to be too passive. Just wait for that last drum to on board, which it has, and now we'll head underway. The 40mm mount isn't as effective as the later Breda Beaufort's. It has a little bit of scatter at range. It's very good at close range but it's not as effective as the later model 40 millimeters that's found on the Sayeta. 
It also only has one access to one type of shell, the HEIT, I believe it is. Whereas the later ones, they have the proxy fuse rounds, which are brutally strong against aircraft. So now the chaos of the coastal engagement has been quelled. It's just a matter of waiting for the tickets to bleed. Time to sail over to Bravo, capture our thoughts. And the ammunition costs are actually reasonable. It's 160 silver lions for a drum of, magaz uh, drum of ammunition, which is 14 rounds. And you can carry 72 on board. In, in terms of some of the other coastal ammunition costs, especially in the later tier frigates, uh, this is actually very reasonable. And the most I've had to spend is about 6,000 silver lions. So overall, it is a profitable ship. I'm also grinding out one of the battle pass tasks, which was Glorious Story. And that involves capturing a point and killing four players a match. And I must say that using a frigate or other fast boat that's survivable is your best bet for achieving that task. The only, the only things I've struggled to achieve for that task with this boat is getting to a capture point. But I'm pretty, pretty certain we have achieved that task and I will complete it at the end of this mission. Three juicy battle pass levels. And I guess this is just an example of what you can get from War Thunder Naval. If you want fast paced action, play a fast boat, fight bigger ships. If you want to just take your time and plan out a mission, get an engagement underway and see that profit, play something like a frigate. 17,000 damage, 11 kills, two aircraft, three assists and a capture. Now a few of those kills were AI, but the rest were players. We get the Terror of the Sea, Survivor, and Wingman, I think. As well as Destroy 10 Units, and the Glorious Story. Play 15 missions, destroying at least 4 players, vehicles, and capturing his own. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out my guide. Until next time, Commander Tyrael, out.